Our new foreign minister has this weekend called on the West to heal its rift with Islam. Bob Carr says recent events in Afghanistan are troubling signs about the growing divide between the two cultures. Our next three guests have had feet at one time or another in both camps. They grew up in Christian or at least nominally Christian households, but as adults they decided to convert to Islam. So what prompted the switch? Susan Carland is a lecturer at Monash University in Melbourne. David Stanley is an electrician from Sydney. And Stacey Mohammed is a 25-year-old mum from Brisbane. Good morning to you all. And thanks for joining us. Good morning. Um, Susan, Good morning. if I can start with you, what, what prompted your decision to convert to Islam? Um, I think I was a teenager when I became Muslim and I think it was when I was a teenager um, I started just to have big questions about life, the universe and everything and I started to explore lots of um, different answers to those questions and much to my surprise Islam seemed to be the one that continually came back to me with the answers that made the most sense to me. Um, so eventually yeah, when I was 19 I, I decided to convert. You say you, you know you were nominally Christian beforehand, was, was your faith always a, a strong part of your life? Yeah, absolutely. I knew that um, I always believed in God and um, I was raised in a, you know, a household where we, we did go to church and those sort of things. Um, and so it was always a very big part of my life and always a very positive part of my life. Um, but I think when I was in my teens, I just started to wonder if I believed what I did because I thought it was true or if it's just what I'd been raised to believe. And that's what sort of prompted the, the outward exploration, I guess. Mm. Okay, this is really interesting. David, describe yes. your life mm -hmm. before you converted to Islam? Um, typical young Aussie guy used to go out and you know drink, smoke, have fun, just <laughs> do crazy things. Also I, I used to be quite a, a, a racist. Yeah, um, right. yeah. And I, I didn't like Muslims at all. I, I what did you know about Muslims before you became what I, what I thought I knew about <laughs> Muslims. Um, okay so firstly what I thought of Islam is I actually thought Islam was a place and yeah, Muslims right. came from this place <laughs> and they hated everyone and yeah. and whoever wasn't a Muslim I, I thought they wanted to convert them and that was it. They're all from Islamabad. So, yeah, <laughs> pretty what much. Was, yeah. What, was the, um, what was the thing that made you go this thing that I don't know anything about well, I now want to join up to? I very quickly within a within the first minute of a conversation I, I, I very quickly realized that my perception of of Muslims and Islam was completely completely wrong mm. and straight away I, I started questioning who, myself and who I was and who I thought I was and they were two completely different people and so, so looking at you now I mean m most people have, have a vision <laughs> in their heads of what a Muslim man in Australia <laughs> looks like and it doesn't look like you how has your life changed since you converted um, more, more on a personal level physically like um, Looking after myself a bit better, not drinking, mm -hmm. not smoking, um, which I really wanted to fix up quite yeah, right. some time prior to that, but it, I just needed that initial kick. And just being a better person, not judging people um, the way I, I used to and denied that I did. Um, mm -hmm. Just more look at myself and, and fix myself instead of worry about what's happening out there. So more thoughtful about your, your own life. Yeah, so. which then cascades throughout to other people that you. Just, just before we, we need to bring Stacey in as well. But I just really want to say, what, what was it? Other religions don't. Do you think are not as introspective? They, there's obviously not as much focus oh. on health, but they don't force you to be a better person. No, no, t totally not. It just wasn't working for me. Yeah, like I, okay. I tried, you know, other things, and and it, in my heart, it just wasn't sitting right you know yeah. I'm not not saying anything wrong about them just for me it mm. yeah okay. it didn't work yeah. so Stacey you also had what what many would describe as a, a typically Australian upbringing uh, can you tell us about that and also about how you, your family reacted I suppose when when you told them you were you were planning on converting to Islam yeah um, my family um, they're very um, supportive I grew up in a very small country town in northern New South Wales um, I had a great upbringing, I had a loving family, um, I'd say I was probably agnostic. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't really tell them about my journey because it was really inner journey rather than, um, you know, telling everyone about what I was thinking about doing. And I started about 2008, so when um, I told them in 2010, they already um, had sensed that there was some changes within. So. 
um, they handled it really good. And I would say that we're probably closer now that I'm a Muslim mm. yeah. than That's before. Fun. Very interesting. <laughs> um, Stacey, when you hear about a terrorist attack that is carried out in the name of Allah, what, what does that, how does that resonate with you? And, and how far removed is that sort of behaviour from your actual religion? Um, I feel sad because I would feel sad if any innocent person died overseas or here. Um, doesn't matter what religion, any innocent person's death is quite sad. But I also feel sad because my religion is misrepresented and um, I know in myself what Islam is, but um, you can't really show that on a 30 second news clip every mm. night. So um, it's quite complex. Mm. and. I, I feel like quite sad because I'm going to be representing Islam and people are going to look at me like I'm linked to terrorism. So yeah. <laughs> that's not how I want my life to be and how I want my son's life to be when he grows up. So yeah. um, it's quite sad. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? You know, the, the media and in fact the public, I think, concentrate on, on the excesses of a particular group of, of Muslims. Right, regards yeah. to the treatment of women, for example, regards to uh, you know, terrorist activity. Mm. But we don't look at the Irish, for example, <laughs> who blew each other up for, you know, a hundred years and say, oh, it's because they're Christians, they're all terrorists, mm. you know. Mm. We, we don't look at people in the deep south of America who have a very strict attitude towards the place of women in their house and feel fearful of them because of the way they treat their mm. women, you know. Mm. It's, it, it, it's, it's a, I guess it's one of those things It's about education, isn't it? We, totally. Islam totally. did become, you know, post-September 11, a, a religion that yeah. was not really known about and therefore feared. And then all of a sudden it's, oh wow, it's all this killing because of Islam and mm. so yeah. of course it's going to instill a fear into normal everyday people. Yeah. I mean, so I'm you know, I think it's a discussion definitely worth having and we'll have to have it some other time because we're out of uh, out of time right now. But yeah, yeah, maybe we can discuss next time, you know, where, where, where uh, Islam itself sits on those extremities of uh, uh, of, 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 I guess, more a cultural thing than a religious thing, yeah. Totally. Mm. Um, anyway, look, thank you so much for joining us all this morning. Susan, uh, Stacey, uh, David, thank you very much. Lovely to have your company. Thank you.